couple videos ago, the battery charging uh, station video, I got a piece of metal in my eye. And uh, yeah, that's the rust ring that was created by the metal in my eye. And uh, that's where the metal used to be and caused the rust ring. And that's where they had to scrape around to get the rust ring out. Uh, I was not in good shape. This has spurred me to design a dust mask with integrated eye protection. And I'm going to show you how I do that. My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. I hope that you like, enjoy, and become a subscriber. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up, and then you hit the bell. Hit the bell again, so you get the little parentheses around it. That way you'll be notified every time I have a new video. Here's the sketch for starting this design project, and the design criteria are integrated eye protection, obviously, easy to talk, easy on and off, works with my hat, and works with a pair of glasses. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up some alginate and we're gonna cast part of my face because I need this to create the nose bridge part. All right, cue the laughter. I'm putting alginate right on my face. The irony here is not lost on me either. Eye injury, putting stuff on your face, close to your eyes, eh, it's alginate. They use it to cast uh, dental, uh, mouth things so it's safe to put on your skin and uh, won't harm you or cause any irritation or burning or anything like that. So I've basically cast my nose area here and I need to put a little bridge across that because the part is too flexible when it comes off and I need a piece of uh, stiffening material. In this case, I use a piece of wood with some holes drilled in it to keep the nose piece from flexing so that when I put it into my mold box here and cast it, out of plaster, it holds its shape. So a simple quick mold box with some clay backed by a piece of foam core. This is just gonna give the part a little bit of support and keep the plaster from going everywhere. Just to add a little bit more context to this project, I am basically in phase one design process and I am doing a proof of concept mock-up to make sure that this whole concept of integrated eyewear protection in a safety mask actually works. So mixing up some plaster, I'm adding in a little bit of blue dye just so you can see the plaster and it's not completely white. I mix my plaster with warm water and I mix it pretty dang thick uh, so that it uh, sets up a little bit quicker. When you're pouring against the alginate, you don't need any mold release. Uh, nothing really seems to stick to that alginate. It's perfect for this process. The alginate does shrink, so you need to be quick when you pour something into the alginate so that you don't get too much shrink. For the eyewear protection, I'm going to use a pair of off-the-shelf 3M eyewear uh, safety glasses that you can buy at any big box retailer. I want to keep this thing uh, using existing components. This is a little bit of three millimeter thick clay that I'm creating here to offset the surface that I'm going to cast. You'll see that in a second. I'm going to place that on the nose mold that we have so that we can compensate for the thickness of the material of the mask. If your company is looking for design assistance, I hope that you consider me for any future design project that you may have up and coming, whether it's hard good or soft goods. You see all the videos that I make here on YouTube. I specialize in handheld and tabletop consumer products. So we're modifying the existing safety wear here, the eyewear. I'm taking off the little nose pads so that I can make that integrate into my uh, nose piece here a little bit better. I'm putting down some Bondo that I mix up and we're just going to squeeze in the eyewear to get that set up. Trimming off the excess Bondo here. I have a whole video series on Bondo and I'm going to link to that. Now you'll see the eyewear is not lined up perfect and that's okay. That's where it's supposed to be and we're just going to recast this out of Bondo. That is sort of the beauty of it but it fits my nose really nice. And all that casting with the alginate and plaster was well worth the effort to set this piece up. And I just hold the pieces in place while the uh, polyester resin sets so that I can get the angle of the eyewear correct. 
All right, now we need to make a pattern for the actual uh, dust mask part of this. And I'm going to use an existing face mask that I have just as a basis to start with. It's going to help me with my pattern so that I'm not guessing and make things a little bit quicker. So I trace the existing part and then I add in the little strap tabs. I'm adding in a little bit of extra material on the front for where we're going to uh, sew the two pieces together, that little hem. Uh, line right there. It's not a hemline actually. And we're going to cut out uh, the pattern. And for the pattern, I like using these manila folders. It's kind of a thick uh, cardboard, easy to cut, easy to change, easy to tape to. And I'm going to use a piece of denim. Uh, this denim material is what I happen to have around. It's not stretchy, but it's going to be cheap, free material that I have. It's also the thinnest material that I have online on hand actually. Most of the materials I have around are leather, uh, but this denim's gonna work just fine. It's strong, it's durable, and it's gonna let me do this proof of concept. So I doubled up the material there, and uh, I got my two pieces cut out, and here I pin the two pieces together, and you can see the two uh, pieces are pinned together, and I actually sew right over the pins. I'm sewing this together on an old uh, Kenmore sewing machine, and I'm gonna backstitch this thing here really quick. Um, if you're looking for more info on a good video, Rain No at Core77 has some amazing sewing videos. I'm going to link to that at the top of the screen here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time sewing. I am certainly no sewing master like Rain is, um, but he has some amazing videos about uh, good sewing tips. Uh, so let's test out the first sort of mock-up here, and I see it's a little close to my eyes, and it needs a little bit of adjustment, but the basic concept is there, and need a little bit more room in the nose. So the manila folder is super easy to adjust. I basically can just trace uh, that folder. Because it has some thickness, it's perfect to trace. i just cut out uh, another pattern here, and... Uh, I'm going to use that to cut out my second one. And you'll notice here I've also marked one and two so that I do not get the patterns mixed up. So I cut out the pieces and we're going to sew that together just like we did the first one. Use some pins, pin everything together, and we're going to head back over to the uh, sewing machine and sew the two pieces up and see how this fits. All right, let's stitch this thing up really quick and uh, see how this thing fits on my face. Back stitch at the end so your uh, thread doesn't unravel. I'm using a pretty thick uh, thread here. I am not using some wimpy kind of cotton thread. This is pretty heavy duty stuff and the denim. You're gonna need a halfway decent sewing machine to pull off something like this. Uh, my machine isn't anything special, uh, but I am taking some extra care uh, and going slow and I suggest you do the same. So let's flip this thing inside out, take a look at what we got and see how this one fits on my face. All right, hat comes off and I can see this is a much better fit on my face. I like where the straps are lining up. Uh, it's not causing any issues with uh, viewing around my eyes and I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, I'm using some retail purchased uh, three quarter inch elastic strapping. You can buy this at any uh, fabric place. So flames in 4K there for everybody. I'm also making a little leather piece uh, for the back of my head just to help the strap adjust. And I'm using my little Arteza cutter. I'll post a link to that below as well. It's a pretty dang handy tool. And Arteza makes some nice stuff that uh, I use here and there. They do supply me with the uh, part so I just want to make sure that that's noted uh, and the link will be below if you want to get one of those for yourself. Let's sew on the uh, elastic strap here and I'm using a box stitch. I am not doing the big X in the middle again. I'm going to link to that Rain No video where he shows how to link how to uh, sew a dog collar using a box X stitch. Uh, I am not going to go to that length for this uh, mock-up. It is not needed uh, since this is just a prove-out concept mock-up. So just a straight-up box is going to be good enough for what I'm doing. You can see my box isn't even that straight, but 
for this purpose of just testing out proof of concept this is just fine all right so use that rotary cutter again here and I'm just making some little nose um, plates uh, or out of some craft foam here it's probably two millimeter craft foam and I'm just cutting that and those are gonna be little nose pads that are gonna go on the inside of the um, denim to uh, thicken up the material so that I can bond it uh, to the nose piece better because there's that uh, seam that runs down the middle of the uh, denim and it's causing an issue on my nose for this prototype and that uh, foam will add a little bit of thickness so let's try this out uh, we're gonna put on the nose piece here just hold it in place you can see uh, things are kind of coming together and what it's gonna roughly look like I'm gonna take those foam pieces and you can see I'm gonna butt them right up against that seam that runs on the inside of the mask and I'm gonna use the uh, Bondo nose piece here just to sort of form everything against the original plaster part while that um, sets up and cures. Now, I want to reuse potentially this piece of polyester Bondo uh, nose bridge that I made, so I'm going to sew it onto my um, dust mask. And to do that, I drill a series of one millimeter holes so that I can sew the piece onto my denim thing and reuse it. I could glue it on or whatever, but I potentially want to reuse it down the line. So I drill a series of holes and then I carefully hand stitch everything together. So here we are at the end of phase one. Uh, it's a mock-up to test out the proof of concept. There are exposed edges, lots of rough sewing, and it's not the final design. The final design is going to look quite a bit different than this, but we're going to incorporate what we learned here in phase one and apply that to phase two to make something that's a little bit more production oriented, looks a lot better, but this is basically to test out the concept, to see if this is going to work. Can I wear my hat? Is it going to fit? Is it going to provide the protection that I need? Here's a basic sketch of what I'm going for in phase two and what you can expect from the next video. If your company is looking for an industrial designer for an upcoming consumer product design project, reach out. I'd be happy to write you a proposal. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can click on the little icon on the bottom right of the screen to do that. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. Rock on. Click here to watch some of the other design and making videos that I have. If you'd like to have your music featured in one of my videos, drop me a line.